हेलो व्यूअर्स टुडे वंस अगेन वी आर हियर विद इंडिया राउंड अप फॉर द इंडियन डायस्पोरा एंड कवरिंग द डिफेंस रिव्यू एंड एज एवरीबॉडी इज अवेयर अबाउट द इंडिया चाइना फेस ऑफ टुडे विद अस टू गाइड अस थ्रू थ्रू अ क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन इज अ वेरी सीनियर वेटरन लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल संजीव छाछड़ा हु हैज वेल डेकोरेटेड विद परम विशिष्ट सेवा मेडल अति विशिष्ट सेवा मेडल विशेष सेवा मेडल एंड ही हैज अ फॉर्च्यून ऑफ कमांडिंग टू आर्मीज दैट इज द नॉर्दर्न आर्मी एंड द वेस्टर्न आर्मी ही हैज बीन अ मेंबर जज आर्म फोर्सेज ट्राइब्यूनल सोल्जर्स इज अ जज एंड हैविंग कमांडेड द नॉर्दर्न आर्मी विच फेसिस पाकिस्तान एंड चाइना इज इन अ बेटर पोजिशन टू क्लैरिफाई ऑल द क्वेश्चन विच आर अराइजिंग from to the india china phase on sir from india round up we heartily welcome you and are thankful to you for giving us this time thank you karl bhadwaj very nice of you all to welcome me and very happy to be on your show this this, this morning sir before we begin i'll just give an, a small uh, introduction as to the india china phase off as the complete world was taken by surprise right prime minister narendra modi's visit on 4th july to ladakh especially a conflict zone and there he addressed the troops and during his address he passed a very uh, the different uh, notes uh, different words to the world which can be connoted by every individual what we say that during his address there are a lot of lessons or messages that have been given to the world which need address by peeps, uh, senior people like you so i will not take that time out and we will do this uh, question answer session in which we have jotted down certain questions which have emerged from the prime minister visit and his address so first and foremost question is that the prime minister chose an opportune time to visit ladakh which took everyone by surprise how would you analyze this overall situation uh, thank you karan bhardwaj <clears throat> very nice to be here you know to understand uh, the prime minister's visit it would be most appropriate to actually understand the environment that was prevailing on the day one day prior to the prime minister's visit and uh, since just a week has gone by and a lot of events have taken place in a dynamic situation like this it would be very uh, important for everybody to understand what exactly was the situation a day prior to his visit and let me take you first to the ground situation you know just 2 3 days before the prime minister's visit 30th of june the army com- the commanders of the military commanders the co commanders on both sides had met and they had probably thrashed out on a 10 hour meeting a process of disengagement and deescalation but 3 2 3 days later we were found that there wasn't any much of movement taking place on what they had at least agreed upon in fact uh, the, the there was no reply no response from either the ministry of defense or the ministry of internal affairs and if you were to speak to any of the army people they also sort of reflected a little gloomy picture so they at least you seem to have a stalemate and nothing much happening very small movements were taking place reductions but they were not of any significance on the contrary despite the having the military commanders having met there was a build up of forces china was building a large amount of forces they had moved in their long range artillery they had moved in their tanks they had um, you know moved in uh, their uh, air equipment there were a lot of helicopter and air activity and improvement in defenses were also being taking place they even had moved people uh, in, in opposite sikkim and opposite arunachal pradesh so actually while they were speaking their activities on the ground didn't reflect any kind of disengagement in their thought process to fish in troubled waters and to make to you know muddle in this already complex situation we saw pakistan moving 
reserves into the Gilgit Baltistan area. And you know, you heard their radars being activated and Skardu air base being activated. So it seemed that they were probably goaded by the Chinese fishing in troubled waters. You also saw um, a lot of activity on the line of control. They felt that probably we were quite busy or engrossed with our northern adversary. So they could take advantage on the line of control and push in as much terrorists as possible into the valley. There were also some reports that the Chinese were in touch with Al Badr, where uh, certain activities, terrorist activities were being planned inside the valley. So all in all, the ground situation was actually very grim and tense. And uh, as I say, it could have gone either way, given the trajectory of the escalation or the, or the way uh, things would have happened. Let me take you on the, on the uh, geopolitical side. You know, the whole world was going against them. And, you know, economic activities, the restrictions being imposed on Chinese imports, their restrictions on their investments in power and infrastructure. And all this was a situation, was a whole situation. And that's the time you had the Prime Minister visiting India, visiting Ladakh. Very well covered, sir. Uh, our uh, focus will be on uh, what the address the Prime Minister has given. So, since you have been at the helm of uh, the Northern Command, a visit by the Prime Minister needs a detailed planning, coordination. And what, uh, how did it go through and how have the soldiers responded to the address and the visit? Uh, let me start by saying, you know, that the visit took the nation, the country by surprise. But a, a, a visit like this requires a lot of detailed planning, coordination, protocol arrangements, you know, rehearsals. So you don't have a prime minister, the chief executive of your country visiting a forward area uh, without necessary advance notices. So you had actually, in this particular case, a Raksha Mantri's visit planned, which had the same program as what the prime minister actually followed. And everything was in organized. So you had to move in commanders. Say, for example, the Northern Army commander has to move in from Udampur to, uh, to the place where he's supposed to receive him. So everything was organized. They probably had their rehearsals. And, uh, and therefore, in the last date, that is just the Thursday evening, late in the evening, they said that the Raksha Mantri visit has been called off and possibly maybe the CDS will visit. But with, before the media could react, Next morning, 6.30, the Prime Minister was on the, on the flight to Ladakh. Now, his visit, I think the entire visit was dedicated to the armed forces. You had, and your, your program was exactly what you would want a Prime Minister to do. You had, apart from, you know, he did his puja at the Sindhu Darshan initially. Apart from that, there was his retelling, his tribute to the brave, brave hearts and the soldiers. His briefing by the army commander on a map. His uh, briefing by the corps commander. And this corps commander's briefing was very important because he's the man on the spot. He's the one who's attended the last three um, flag meetings. He's the one who knows the ground situation. And for the prime minister to know firsthand of what the ground was, it was very appropriate. He had his address to the nation, to the, to the troops. He was able to visit the hospital and meet the injured uh, soldiers who were injured in the Galwan action. He also carried out an aerial recce. So I think everything that you would want a prime minister to do in a particular, in this area, he did. And he did it rather well. And some people are asking, why Nimu? Well, Nimu, I thought it was a very wise decision to select Nimu. Nimu is, is a, a, a very important operational base, very close to uh, Leh. It has the space. It is secure. It has the secrecy and uh, it has the necessary wherewithal where the entire visit could be well, well conducted. Why not nearer? Well, you know, you have, it is quite near, but yet far enough to be sounding too provocative or maybe affecting the ongoing uh, discussions that is taking place between, uh, between China and India on the de-escalation. After all, you must remember. Uh, de-escalation was the most important factor at this point in time. And of course, Nimu is high altitude. It's 11,000 feet above sea level. Uh, anything higher than that would, 
you wouldn't want uh, uh, the prime minister to go there. It is medically un- inadvisable to be going there. So I think, in all in all, I think it was a very good selection. Selection of a place. His address, his demeanor. You saw the moment he got off the aircraft, confident, brisk, nothing, uh, no showing of the effects of an high altitude, which otherwise normally show in in any normal human being. His tribute to the uh, to the soldiers was was electrifying. People were actually taken aback by the way he paid the tribute to the bravery of our soldiers. You all have heard his his speech. Everybody followed it very closely, so I won't talk about much about this. What all he spoke, but I will just say that there were four important takeaways from his speech. One uh, that the that India believes. in the paradigm of development he talked about atmanirbhar bharat two and very important that india would resist and oppose every expansionism and this was directed towards the chinese although he didn't name them and three the army is well prepared and all its wherewithal will be given in fact the expenditure on infrastructure development would be tripled and finally and most importantly india is committed to peace but that we peace that commitment is not to be shown as seen as a weakness and india can take care of itself so i think this these four points will actually form the basis of the strat india strategy in the years to come sir uh, very well uh, covered sir though the de escalation was a part Uh, of, uh, which was uh, at the top of the affairs, but however, the prime minister visit did uh, give an indication about that India's intent and action, and uh, he or uh, his message, which uh, which had been deciphered, is that the soldiers' action in Galwan Valley has sent a strong message to the world, and the message was very clear that India is ready if an opportunity so arises. to take on the adversaries his message also covered that india is capable of taking on anyone whether it is india uh, pakistan or it is china then immediately after prime minister's address at nimu the chinese foreign uh, spokesperson came up and very hurriedly gave a statement that india should not take any unilateral action so all this drive that they saw the prime minister's visit as a very hardened visit in which a very strong message was given coming to the next question sir what do you understand what do you feel about the analysis of the chinese reaction to the prime minister's address and visit to lay you know uh, uh, do you know that within 2 hours of the prime minister's visit there was a message they uh, they, they reacted china doesn't react like this although the prime minister had not even named china in his entire address you see he was he was surprised like all of us was he was bewildered i'm sure some intelligence guy of chinese must have been sacked for not having been able to decipher or forewarn the chinese on the prime minister's visit i'm sure about it rattle the chinese mouthpiece as you just said talked about that the prime minister's visit was a political stunt and that indian troops were no batch to pla can you imagine a country large country like china saying that the prime minister visit is a political stunt and that the chinese that the indian army is no match to pla and i think you know it's a very important quote and i want to quote from that line what the the global times said and it said i understand that the prime minister modi needs to make a political stunt at the border and talk tough but please quietly tell indian to border troops about china which you know is much stronger than india tell them not to mess with pla because they are really no match for pla this is the first reaction of the chinese of course a little while later when the chinese spokesperson was called he was a little more mellowed and he said that india and china are in communication with each other and that uh, we neither should side should make do anything that may complicate the situation and uh, so 
that is how the reaction, initial reaction, take place. On their, on the, they did not rely that the whole of nation approached the economic action. That uh, you know, on that also they said that India should not make a, a strong miscal miscalculation about India. And uh, but but do you know that within two days of the Prime Minister's visit, that is on Sunday, starting on Sunday, but more primarily on Monday. The plan that was agreed by the two core commanders on the 30th meeting started being put into place. And as we today speak to each other, you know that the disengagement process is already on. A certain amount of disengagement has been entirely completed in the Galwan Valley. Disengagement has also happened in the Gogra and the Hot Springs areas. In the Penging So area, the disengagement is very less. Although some movement has been seen have taken place between finger four and finger five, although they still hold, there are some, still some structures in the high ground dominating the finger four. So that's an area where they probably will have to get together. But what I'm trying to say is, they will, it'll take a little more time. There will be some more confirmation, some more um, verifications to be done. But to understand how it is going to happen, the plan that the two core commanders had agreed was actually in four phases, which now have held, is now being seen in place. The first stage was to was to disengage from both areas, disengage and fall fall back to about one point five to one point eight kilometers apart, with not more than thirty soldiers on either side across this point. To create a buffer zone between where no patrolling will take place, which is, this is between one, you know, there'll be about three to four kilometers of a buffer zone between where no patrolling will take place. Some people have criticized why a buffer zone, why are we withdrawing back when uh, they are supposed to only withdraw back? Well, I would say this has been done in the last couple of uh, scuffles or actions also. In, in, in uh, Doklam it was done. It was in, in um, uh, earlier in the hot spring also it was done like this. Uh, more of a confidence building measure. You know, their tempers are very high. If there is an inadvertent clash, it could lead to even further flare-ups. And sometimes it is important to take confidence-building measures as more important. Then you have another one kilometer behind. They're going to be behind there. And there behind that, about 50 soldiers can be allowed on either side. With no permanent structures, there will be intended accommodations. And this is a temporary measure. Once we feel that confidence building measure, there is little mutual trust and confidence between them. Then the next process, which is now going to be discussed in the next meeting of the core commanders, will be will 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 take forth on how the disengagement is going to take place. But very interestingly, you know, before I before I allow you to go, how did this take place? I mean, till the Prime Minister's visit, everything was nothing was on the ground. I think there are it's a combination of many factors. And I want to just call them Firstly, you must remember the ferocity of the enemy, of, of the Indian reaction. They did not expect it. Secondly, the whole of nation approach that India showed. Three, while the plan was ready on 30th, we saw there was no movement. But there was a plan ready. Of course, fourth, of course, the Prime Minister's visit, you know, where a, a quick un, a resolve, India's resolve, an unambiguous approach was actually shown to the world and to China. But last two points are more important. The weather and terrain is very important. As we grow into the, the snow is melting, the rivers are getting in spate. These places where the Chinese have occupied are actually not going to be untenable in the future. And as September, October comes and, the, and it becomes freezing in the East Ladakh, it's a different ball game. And lastly, what actually clinched the deal was a call by the uh, special representatives of India and, and China on the border issue, which is the national security advisor in India and the foreign minister that side, Wang Li, who actually spoke for two hours, thrashing out on Sunday evening, who thrashing out the modalities and saying that it is very important for us to de-escalate the situation, otherwise things will go bad. And I'm I'm told, I'm not so sure, but there was some very plain speaking done by the RNSA where he was where he told them that look, if this if you don't withdraw, then India will have no hesitation 
to probably you know evict you by force and that fits the deal so next day you had all this movement taking place so add to what you just uh, quoted from the global times uh, china has uh, tried to put portrayed it as a political stunt at least realizing that the damage which has been suffered by the chinese soldiers in galwan valley is uh, of of very many fold the chinese troops there uh, as it has been reported in number of journals was in the ratio of 1 is to 5 for one indian soldier there were five chinese and as per reports that have emerged the total casualties that are being put in is approximately between 53 to 100 so that type of fire and fury was the action that was done by our brave soldiers in the galwan valley and because of that if you now read the very uh, news that is emerging there has been no formal uh, burials of the soldiers who have died there there has been no uh, formal uh, acceptance of the bravery of the soldiers who have fought in the galwan valley as it has been seen on indian side so it's only the china was trying to uh, keep the complete casualties in their side at a low way and not to reflect it to the world as to they have suffered very heavily coming to the last part sir uh, i will request you to guide us as to where do we go from here you know uh, to understand this where do we go and the impact of the visit impact of the galwan action is already we've already discussed but must we must try and analyze why did they do this you know in a given the it's a pandemic situation they are suffering is india is also suffering the world is suffering going through a pandemic situation why would they want to do this something like this what goaded them to do this was it domestic compulsions where they realized that uh, it was important to do something outside to divert the attention was it uh, because uh, uh, you know august 19 the um, we had made a change in our constitutional amendment and we talked made the dark uh, union territory and therefore they felt that maybe we are going to make forces into aksai chin our home minister uh, amit shah also made a statement that aksai chin is ours and we will take it in due course of time or could it be the um, just the infrastructure development you know the road development with this everybody is talking about the the road to dbo yeah. this has been going on for the last 10 years i mean if they had to react they could have reacted much earlier but yes some feeder roads from this road to our petrol points have actually been made now which is going to uh, make make their stay and particularly their positions a little more difficult they it's going to increase their cost maybe they wanted to just probably teach india a lesson and say ki look in the hegemonic hierarchy we are still number one and you're not anywhere around and i think it was a culmination of all these factors but whatever rational they have done whatever they've done they've actually all the previous treaties that we built over 25 years of discussion with each other so many treaties have happened it started off from 1993 when prime minister rajiv gandhi visited china and the first time we actually started talking about our border and it has taken a very long time to develop one treaty after another to create a protocol of how we are going to deal with this border all of them thrown into the dustbins of history in one go and you have lost the trust of each other it will take so much of more time for this to happen and i hear you know i want to quote uh, ambassador uh, gautam bambavle he's made a very profound statement and i want to use it here for minor tactical gains on the ground china has strategically lost india what a what a profound statement what is the future where do we go from here China does not want or always wants an unequal relationship with its neighbors it's not on the same level the prime minister's visit is up the ante there is military build up both sides this although the end but the disengagement and the deescalation is in process supposing it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen and they are not very inclined to do so he must remember he has moved 40000 or over 40000 troops from or 2000 kilometers from mainland china to this area he is not going to upstick them overnight and take them back he'll be foolish he looks so foolish what he's done in this disengagement is primarily 
uh, 200 people disengaged and brought back 200 me- two kilometers behind. That's all. So there is a very long process of disengagement first and de-escalation later of all these forces that have been brought in from outside in this area to actually go back. and then can the peace process of peace between the two countries actually start one thing i can say very clearly if there's another military skirmish it's going to be counterproductive for china he's not going to attempt it because he now knows first that the army is alert two he can't get the intrusion that he was thinking that he could do because we are quite well alert and deployed in in a manner that we would resist any such uh, worries of his and three he knows he's facing a battle hardened army he's seen the result of what that in galwan so any further you know is going to be actually more effective because now you know um, the restrictions on use of firearms is also removed they, uh, which were actually there and as part of protocol and the discretion has been left to the commanders on the ground they will do what they have to do to uh, safeguard the inte- integrity and territorial uh, guarantees of your country so the problem now is can we trust him despite all this talks that we are on the answer is no we can't and therefore every step that we go through is going to be a long drawn process we'll have to check recheck reconfirm talk to each other and bring it to a situation back as it was pre galwan days or pre these three year days it's going to take a long 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 time and therefore i think the options for india are that we have to stand firm uh, we have to rally the international support as we are doing fortunately the the, the world is actually to, uh, supporting us also in this area we have to improve our defense posture we have to improve our ability to be able to defend each of these areas we have to improve our uh, you know keep our window of ne- negotiations open but i must tell you finally we have to do some we'll have to deal with china on our own despite all the international support that we have and therefore building up of our capability our uh, intelligence our surveillance our uh, reconnaissance capabilities our ability to hold ground our reserves all that and also be prepared for uh, frequent clashes like this happening with with due results so i can only say that um, it's going to be a long haul a very long drawn process but shall i say i will end my talk by saying that we we can be cautiously optimistic uh hoping that better sense will prevail on both sides on their side more and that we can become partners in our development rather than being rivals like we are doing now today thank you so i'll conclude this uh, from the quote what you just mentioned about the foreign minister that for little tactical gain china has lost a very big uh, economy of india and uh, this also yes. uh, highlights the quote uh, not not uh, the highlights the statement made by the prime minister who said that time for expansionism without naming china is over he recalled that it is this mindset of expansionism that did great harm and this is the time for development and india is for development if india considers as peace india is also ready to prepare for is ready for any eventuality when it arises so thank you very much sir for your valuable time for this uh, defense review of on the india round up and we are very happy and uh, we are very grateful for your uh, being present here for this show thank you very much sir thank you for inviting me as a pleasure to be here 